Hello everyone. This video is specifically meant for those students who are going from class 10 to class 11. The purpose of this video is very simple and straightforward. You see, uh, although there is a very natural progression in the breadth of the things that you have to do and the intensity of the uh, studies that you have to do from class 6 to class 10, it's very gradual. When you go from 10 to 11th, however, it's a very immense leap both in the amount of things that you have to study as well as in the intensity of the things uh, as well as in the depth of the understanding uh, which you need to have to understand the subjects and on top of that you also need to have a proficiency in problem solving especially for those students who are uh, thinking of going for uh, JE. So what I thought was that uh, Every year, students make some common mistakes and these mistakes cause them very dearly uh, in the sense that because time is so very short and if there is a mistake in the approach which they take in doing their studies, then the whole thing falls apart and it causes irreparable damage. So if I point out certain mistakes, probably you will be aware of them so that you can sidestep them. So with this motivation, let us get on with, the, uh, with these things. So I'll just point out certain very common mistakes which students do year after year so that you can avoid them. The first and foremost mistake uh, is that uh, it's a bit psychological is that many students uh, when they are confronted with the immense difficulty in the level jump uh, of their studies in class 11, they live in a state of denial. What I mean by that is, uh, and this especially happens to those students, ironically, who are actually good students, who have performed very well, who have come out with flying colors in their 10th, it happens most commonly with them. Uh, it is that they think that, I mean, I am so good in studies, come on, how difficult it really would be. Probably it is not that difficult what I'm facing now in 11th, and uh, maybe I'm just a little bit tired after the grinding that I have done for my 10th board, and all I need to do is, I'll rest a little bit, freshen up a little bit, and then I'll be all set to understand these things in a very simple fashion. Wrong. Things actually are difficult. So mark, mark my words, things are actually difficult. And the sooner that you accept it with an honest mind, the better it will be for you. So do not live in denial, accept the challenge, accept the difficulty and do the work to overcome this difficulty. This is the first thing that you need to do in the very approach uh, that you take in your uh, 11th. Also connected to this psychological thing is waiting for motivation. So you have to be very professional about it. A professional is somebody who doesn't wait for motivation. His job is to do something and he will do it by turning up for work every day. It is as simple as that. Whether you want to or not, that does not matter. You have a job on your hand, you have to do it in a very professional way. So just turning up uh, turning up means sitting down and stud studying. Even if you do not feel like doing it, you have to do it. Okay, that is your duty. So in these two years, do not wait for motivation to strike you. And then you maybe you work for maybe 12 to 14 hours, 15 hours a day for a few days. And then that motivation goes away. And then it drops down to maybe not even 3-4 hours a day. What is the good of that? Okay, so you have to be very consistent in your efforts and be very professional in your consistency. Next, um, this is very, very important. You have to manage your expectations. You see, not everybody who is starting 11th is starting at the same level. It seems like you are starting all starting afresh with a, on a clean slate. It's not like that. So the way that you have progressed up to class 10th, it has been dif different for different students. There are many students, believe it, who have already developed a certain proficiency in their problem solving attitude. And it is this where uh, a lot of differences are created right in the starting condition itself in the JE preparation and certainly in the boards preparation also. Uh, so just think very honestly, when you were preparing for your ninth, for your 10th, was it usual, usually your practice that when confronted with a new problem, maybe from maths, maybe from science. Could you do it on your own without looking at the solution? Just ask yourself this very uh, 
intently and try to answer it very honestly. If the answer is yes, that you could do it on your own, at least some of the problems, some of the challenging problems, some of the more difficult problems, you could do it on your own, then yes, you have some problem solving aptitude. And uh, to a certain extent, uh, I mean, it may be a little bit innate, natural ability, but this is also something which can be honed. So by resisting the temptation to look at the solutions each time you are confronted with a difficult problem and trying on your own, that way you can hone your abilities. I've already made quite a few videos, uh, at least a couple of videos before this uh, last year uh, on problem solving aptitude. Uh, if you want, I can make some more, but uh, that's for later. For now, I'm saying that manage your expectations. If you do not have this problem solving aptitude to start out with, then you should not be expecting miraculous results uh, in your uh, 10 plus 2. This is the stark truth. Okay, I don't mean to be rude or uh, very pessimistic, very negative about it, but this is the stark truth. So what do you have to do? You have to develop your problem solving ability. Okay, the, the more you postpone it, the more you think that, okay, now I'm facing this difficulty. Let me look at the solution. Let me learn the solution. This won't work. Okay, you have to fight with yourself to develop your problem solving ability. Okay, so depending on how your problem solving abil ability is, manage your expectations and uh, proceed accordingly. Next, uh, again, your preparation is something which is very individual to you. So although it is good to take motivation by listening to various kinds of interviews of toppers or uh, things like that, but that should not be the guiding principle of your preparation. So you should prepare as per your flaws, as per your, um, I mean, the setbacks that you have to try to overcome those, what you need to do, you should be able to understand that yourself and proceed accordingly. You should not be thinking, oh, that guy has done such a fabulous job. That guy has done such a thing. I will also do it like that. It is not going to work out for you. Every guy's story, every student's story is different. Okay, and you have to be very, very selfish and very, very self-centered. Although these are seemingly bad words, you have to be very self-centered in your preparation. Only then your preparation will be complete. Okay, so please try to remember this. Uh, you should not be listening to uh, anybody's advice in order to go into the specifics of your preparation. On a similar note, my next advice is regarding uh, the mentors, the uh, videos that you see from the mentors, especially from the IIT graduates. Uh, I mean, YouTube is filled with these kinds of advice from various IIT graduates. Okay, uh, so if you're listening to these kinds of advice for fun and entertainment, it is still all right. Uh, Maybe you're losing a little bit of time, but okay, I can understand it. But for God's sake, please do not pay any money to buy any mentorship program. Okay, this is, this is not good. Okay, I can probably use more harsh words to describe it, but I'll resist from doing it. So please, my earnest advice to you, my earnest request to you is that please do not pay any money for these kinds of mentorship things. As I said again, your preparation is your thing. You have to understand best what you need to do and proceed accordingly. Okay, so uh, please do not do these things. Uh, regarding the actual preparation. So one thing which many students do not realize is that unlike 9th and 10th, where many of the subjects, uh, subject matter, the topics, they were like self-contained in 11th and 12th, uh, especially in mathematics and physics, especially so in physics, the things are sequential. It is also true to a certain extent in things like organic chemistry also. Sequential means uh, you cannot learn a later chapter by sacrificing the knowledge of the previous chapter. You have to do the first chapter first, the second chapter second, and only then you can proceed up to a certain number of chapters. So, uh, why I'm saying this is some students, what they do is in the initial uh, parts, 
they are a little bit distracted they wait for motivation as i said earlier they wait for motivation they they look at various videos and they waste their time and uh, they don't actually start their preparation so they start lagging behind and once they start lagging behind in the coaching institutes in the classroom uh, uh, maybe in schools only uh, the teacher goes much ahead and the pace is always furious you have to understand this almost every couple of weeks a new chapter will be started something like that so if you lag behind it will be very difficult for you to cope up later on so you have to be always always up to date this is my earnest advice to you okay please do not lag behind next uh, the topics are sequential as i uh, told you they are also a little bit interconnected not just within a subject but also across subjects for instance uh, in physics from the very start you need to learn uh, you need to know calculus now calculus is taught in mathematics a little bit later so you see the interconnection actually exists it's it's a very natural interconnection so the earlier you start learning calculus on your own the better it will be for you okay so please do not uh, this is a very very specific advice that please do not postpone learning calculus i joke to some of my students that uh, because i deal with more senior students that i do not even consider somebody born in science unless they have learned calculus so pehle paida to ho jao so so learn calculus okay uh, and similarly uh, try to keep an open mind regarding the interconnections across across subjects for example a uh, quite a few things that you learn in physics may be important in physical chemistry okay so uh, things which you do in mathematics besides calculus also uh, for example trigonometry coordinate geometry these may be actually important in uh, solving various kinds of mechanics problems so uh, you have to be really up to date okay and uh, for calculus you have to do it out of turn okay because calculus uh, in the class 11th book it comes at a much later chapter but at the very beginning you learn it on your own use whatever resource it doesn't matter don't be too formal about it just learn it on your own you will thank yourself later uh, another important thing which many students do not do is that even if you think that you have understood a particular topic it is absolutely incumbent upon you that you come back to revise this topic revise means not just revise for the sake of memory uh, to remember the things again but to actually restudy them that is the better word actually to restudy them why i am saying this is that especially in things like physics the concepts are uh, so very deep that unless you restudy them you will not be able to unlock newer and newer deeper levels of understanding which you absolutely need to solve the problems so this is again my earnest advice to you that uh, once you think that you have understood something you have done a few problems then you go on to the another chapter set up a schedule for yourself where you can come back and restudy very quickly uh, some of the earlier chapters you will yourself realize how uh, how better your understanding will be as you slowly do this okay so set up a nice schedule where as you keep on going forward you keep on coming back and uh, restudying the previous things so these are some of the uh, most important things that i wanted to talk to you about uh, please note that nowhere in these things in which i have asked you to side step to avoid doing these kinds of mistakes nowhere i have mentioned regarding distractions okay now distractions is something which at this particular age when you are 15 16 uh, years old uh, it is bound to happen okay so take it in your stride it is bound to happen but if you are actually very seriously doing your preparation then you won't actually have very honestly speaking you won't have time for distractions still because i'm giving advice let me just give you a small tip here that uh, instead of letting your mind uh, be tempted by all sorts of different distractions what you can do is you select your own distraction 
select one particular distraction and indulge in that whenever you have some leisure time. If you want to indulge in it, indulge in that in a very proactive fashion. And please, please let not that distraction be something to do with social media. Okay. Uh, I know the temptation is huge. I myself still at this day and age also, I still uh, fall victim to this temptation. But I am not preparing for JE, right? I am not preparing for my plus two. I am not at the crucial age. So the damage done is probably a little bit less. But if the damage done to you is there, so it will be completely irreparable. So stay away from it as far as possible. Uh, play a certain game. Uh, talk with your friends. That is good enough. Okay. So have a little bit of an outlet. But uh, don't let your mind be scattered into various kinds of distractions. Pick one thing and do that. Indulge in that in a very controlled fashion. So all right. So with these pieces of advice, I'll end this video. My uh, very best wishes to all of you as you start probably one of the uh, biggest struggles of your life as you step into class 11th. All the very, very best to all of you.